All right, welcome. It's the 22nd of November. This is documentation office hours. Uh, let's see, Meg, it's just you and me for right now. So we'll okay. list that. I've got uh, news from plugins development, 3.322 change log, or 2.322, 2.319.1 upgrade guide and change log, triage team and plugin installation manager latest news. Uh, any other good. topics? Well, if we have time, I'd like to discuss managing Jenkins and the old PR, et cetera. Good. Okay. So let's put but, that one in. The others can go pretty fast. Well, several, some of them will be slow, others very fast. So we'll do what we can. Okay. How about good. the, let's put that one third here because the triage team and the plugin installation manager stuff will wait. Okay, well, okay. this can wait too. So we'll, okay. we can, well, we can do it. We can make sure that we leave. How much time do we need for triage team and plugin installation manager? Uh, at most five minutes. Okay, I'll give a call at six or 7.55 of your time. Okay, great. And we'll All just right. stop whatever we're talking about and do those. Excellent. Okay. So uh, latest news from the world of plugins.jenkins.io. Gavin is investigating other generation techniques uh, and it may allow links to be embedded inside the page for GitHub Markdown. So, okay, what sort of person is Gavin? Do I send him beer or chocolates or what? <laughs> I, I do not know. We'll have to ask him. He's, he's been the very capable and kind and, and very, very talented developer of Jen plugins.jenkins.io. Okay. Good. Well, what you can tell him is if he needs any scribal services for what he's doing, I'll be happy to contribute. Well, thank you. That's very great. I will certainly pass it along. Gavin is also a uh, Jenkins govern governing board officer. Oh, so, okay. All right. Next name, next so. piece then was the, the 2.322 change log. All right. So here, let's just go ahead and look at it. Okay, so here's what we've, whoops, here's no wrong. Here's what we've got as changes. Make it big enough to read. Okay. Okay. So this one we'll have to move later after the, after the release right. because the order. you wanted to put that, you wanted to note that in the agenda now. You said that. Oh, week. that's right. Yes, so changes, so move the developer topic to the end end of the change log okay got it good and then we've got an rfe add descriptions to disc to administrative monitors and i like this one so daniel's comment was add descriptions or not it could be easily considered too minor and i thought I, I personally like this pull request a lot and would like it to be in, but let's test with yes. you, Meg. So here, let's look at how he, he provided a, a very nice, um, if I remember right, he gave us a, there it is, a screenshot that shows how it looks. Uh, no, no, why do I, oh yes, here it is, screenshot. I have to expand it. So this is how it looks. Now, if I look at the current version on a real Jenkins, on a running Jenkins instance, uh, this is enabled administrative monitors. Okay, so we'll click there. So remember this layout where it's got a bowl, a larger text thing immediately to the, to the right of the checkbox, uh -huh. some labels that highlight the, um, the, a specific tag for a thing, in this case, security, um, and then a small description beneath it. Now let's look for administrative monitors. Here we go. When I click this, here's what uh, the current looks like. So we have that, but nothing. Oh, definitely an improvement. I like this very much, yes. Yeah, me too. So, so for me, this is an easy, yes, absolutely, we should say it, because knowing what cyclic dependency checker means or cyclic dependencies detector that's that's really nice or right 
Okay, good. So we agree. Yeah. And so what we need to do is we need to change that description so that it says edit. Okay, edit. Oh, come on, where is it? My scrolly thing. Upgrade guidelines. No. Here we go. Add descriptions. Yes. Okay, now prepositional phrase positioning. Yes. Add descriptions to the, or should it be add descriptions of built in? Yeah, and of built in. Of all built-in administrative, or actually, we don't need to say all, do we? They'll figure that out. It's too many. Yeah, of built-in to the global configuration. Or right, let's see. Add descriptions of built-in administrative alerts to the global configuration. Now, what's so that allows disabled on them? It's trying to say that there's a checkbox. Ah, but there, or, that's already there, right? Or is that? Or is it? Is it selection page? So. So here's how it looks when I check and uncheck. That's what he means by and the enable disable. So that's not a new feature. The checkbox is not a new feature. The checkbox is definitely not. Yeah. I think this is good. We've added the descriptions. I think that's good enough, period, at the end. OK, like that? Yeah. All right. That's, I mean, we never really talked about what the criteria are. I've wondered some of the others that we've decided not to put in there because there's two things. One is obviously if users really need to know about this, but the mm -hmm. other is if you're the sort that looks at the change log every time, it's nice to see that every week things are being improved. Right, right. See, you know? from, I think we keep discussing it and we strike compromises when we see things like this. This one for me feels like a very good choice yes. to include. All right. Okay. So I'm going to update and we'll, we'll give the, we'll press the do it again button a little later. Okay. So okay. we've been through that one. Now the next, the next is use new styles for more tables. And it's got a multi-line um, comment here. So let's go at that one. Okay, so. Okay, so what he was modifying is the old way of looking at it. Oh no, this is the this is the new way now with the current current UI. Notice the notice the rounded corners here ah. and the the font, etc. So and all uppercase here instead of if I look at the same thing in the current, it looks like this. Okay, notice that compared to this. Uh-huh. So, so purely the, aesthetic, no content, but yes, nice. What's that? Purely aesthetic. Yes, yes, but, it is. But that's this but is, again, that's something you know, constant improvement. Right. This is very much uh, trying to to the continued effort to improve the look of the user interface. Absolutely. Now, okay. can we characterize what's affected by this PR? Some other better way than just more tables. Uh, yeah, so that well, certain, go ahead. The tables in the such and such module are. Yeah, so let's go look at the text here because the text gives us some of that already. <laughs> Oops, wrong. Okay, so the text says modernized system info site and log recorder site. Ah. Okay, so and this has two changelog entries because it's actually fixing a bug in addition. So this one, okay. that, and that's why this is, is, has two bullets there. But the problem is the automatic generator doesn't really have support for two bullets. So right. I think this one will just have to fix afterwards. And now it means we got to go find the bug that was fixed by this. Where is it? Is it mentioned here? I saw the string PR swing by someplace. 
there. Oops. Nope. Just a minute, let's keep looking. Maybe we can find it. Nope. Okay, so I'll have to go looking for it separately. So this is one where what we really need to do is split this into two. Or could those, can we combine those? Let's see. This is all, it's a system info site and log recorder site. Yeah, and I would use the word page rather than site. Site, okay, yeah. Or we could, can we say system info and log recorder pages? Oh, yes, yes, very good, even better. Um, good, okay. Now modernize. Yeah, it's using British spelling well, like Jan has used elsewhere. Right, I'm not complaining about that, oh. but I'm thinking, okay. Well, let's let's leave. I was thinking about trying to do something out more, but okay. Let's see. Modernized system info recorder pages by let's. Well, he said something about the table. Applying new table. Right. Let's take a look at that. So apply, it was. Apply, and I'm thinking about making it comma display full name. You know, can we make this into one? Oh, see, for me, I wouldn't make it into one. Okay, you don't this, want to do that. Well, the reason I wouldn't make this this one is actually a bug fix. Okay. And it needs a uh, it needs a regression since uh, two dot xxx. Okay. Because what happened was we, and and now I'll have to go find it. Let me go see if I can locate it because it was uh, full. It's full username. Nope in security realm. Nope. Okay, so I'll have to go looking for it separately. Uh, it This definitely was previously showing. Um, okay show it well let's let's go look at it so it's if we look at manage jenkins and manage users mark wait here is the user id not the username if we edit that ah. thing you'll see that the name should be mark wait mark space wait and right. so it's it, we, it, we we regressed we switched now it's 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 stating it correctly it's telling us it's showing user id but it previously was showing username. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Okay, so, so, that's a, so then go back. What was the actual title of the PR? That was where he had oh, something about the table the or something. Uh, okay. The use new style for more tables here. Let me save that. Use new style for more tables was the title. So rather than modernize, should we just say use new style for? those two pages yeah although the reason or, the reason i was you, leaving it modernize is because the word modernize has been used in several other pull requests in the same theme okay then that works and it's terse and yeah that was that was my thought was okay right. every when we're doing those those improvements so i'm i'm prone i think just to let it sit for right now and and then I've got to go find that one. Let me make a note. Okay. Split. Um, which one is it? 5925 into two. Two. Uh, find the issue ID for the user ID instead of username. You'll know what that means. Yeah, that's. So are you OK if we go with that or is absolutely, something? absolutely. Okay. So we'll hold that one. So now the next one then is five nine one nine missing icon in the dashboard view settings. I setting icon shows in the drop down menu. 
let's see. Whoops, I made a mistake. Okay, so the fix here is that this configure system with the gear icon on the left is in the in the current version broken. So if I if I go here, click this drop down, click this, whoops, too fast. Click this drop down here. Notice as I hover there, there's a broken icon. I see, yes. Okay, so this is fixing that. Right. Um, now the question is, how should we phrase it? Setting icon shows in the drop down menu is again visible in the drop down menu. Um. So the 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 setting it's using is configure system. So maybe the word setting is a mistake as well. Yeah. Yeah. Display icon for configure system. Um, oh, yes, yes. Okay, there we go. You said it brilliantly. Okay. Period. That's good. I like good enough. Yep. Okay. All right. And then the others are skipped. And as I look at those, yes, those are all reasonable skips. So you're okay with where we're at there? I am. Great. So let's do this magical thing of regenerate the regenerate the change log run it oops okay it's running great next topic then so we've been through 2.322 change log the next one is the 2.319.1 upgrade guide and change log Okay. So let me get a copy of this first. So the one that I want feedback on, Tim gave me some good feedback here on, hey, this thing has some pieces <clears throat> that are too verbose. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to increase the size of this one. Is that legible I, for you, Meg? It is, yes. Okay, good. <coughs> All right. So Tim's concern is that there are four entries on here under notable changes since 2.303, roughly mid-screen, there are four entries for what is fundamentally one conceptual change. And, and as you look at the text there, you can probably see why it's four separate entries, but his, his recommendation was, hey, should we first consider making this third entry, add the system property, something or other, put that into the upgrade guide, not in the change log, because upgrade guide is probably the more detailed location for that. And then we could link from here to the upgrade guide. So that would remove one of the th four bullets. He then suggested combine or remove the warn about the use of the master in label expression. And then the idea was, could we combine, could you and I get phrasing that combines the top two into a single thing? what I was, what I, I had started a draft of it down here in the text. And this, okay, yeah, so his, his concern is this one, talking about adding code in a change log is commenting on this one, 
the second one is like, hey, that's the phrasing is is weak, right? That's of course we're adding code. We could put that on every single entry. <laughs> Meg, you still there? Oh, I may have lost you. No, oh, no, I'm here. Oh, good. I, okay. I choked on my diet coke, so I <laughs> muted myself, and oh, then kept talking. So, um. This, uh, do we have a blog about the building node? We have that blog explaining the terminology change. We do, yeah. Well, we've got, not only do we have, not only do we have a blog for it, we also have a, um, a page on Jenkins.io for it, dedicated oh, okay. to it. I, what I was thinking about for the, is that these could just say, we implemented the terminology change and is building node in part of the, the terminology change or is that a separate? It, it it is, but well, it is. But I want to be sh I want to be sure that we mention the the specific term here, built in node, as part of this because they need to understand. And this must be tied should use the label built dash in, and this link to the built in node name label migration thing is maybe that should be a link to the to the upgrade guide. So what I did, just so you're clear, what I did here is here's the upgrade guide. In the upgrade guide, I copied uh, almost all of that article into the upgrade guide because I thought, you know what, they need to read read it from the upgrade guide. Right. Right. Yeah. I... Well, I'm gonna. I think we'll we'll be more successful if we start the editing. So I'm gonna bring up my editor and let's yeah. do the editing. Okay. So, because can we do something like upfront implement? A lot of the stuff from the terminology change and the building the, the you know those links that you've got to those documents including and then do a bullet list of these individual ones oh interesting idea okay let's that try makes that it, you know it's like the rule you know that makes it a smaller list of stuff but we still get the details yeah because I'm we can't sure. say that all terminology is fixed yet it's just doing some of it you're certainly correct that but okay but none of these are the point these are part of a bigger effort right they they so we are talk about the bigger effort and say this much was implemented in this release yeah see for me i really like okay notice this one this is pull request 5425. This one is also pull request 5425. So in the same pull request, I think we could reasonably combine these. And now let's take, include the reference. And that doesn't need to be fully qualified like that. And the question is, should it be this 2.30? So this is 2.319. Okay, so now that's the wrong hyperlink. Okay, back to what I was trying to say before I got interrupted doing those edits. I think we could move this up here and collapse out this thing entirely. And that now we've got to find the phrasing. Okay, 
replace the term master with controller. Now you had suggested um, something about, whoops. Now where, and what, what component is that? Because it's not done, this is not the entire Jenkins, right? It's some part of it. Uh, yes, well, so with controller, uh -huh. Okay, uh, that's a good question. Replace the term master with controller for the main Jenkins application, for the main Jenkins, so here it is, for the main Jenkins application. So don't even need to parenthesize it. Okay, with control. Does, that, does that, what is that? I mean, where am I gonna see? Does that mean in the manage nodes page? It does, yeah, so yeah. well, so. What else? Um, so let's let's go look at it, that's very good. So um, as here a user, is, I want to know oops, what pages I think. Right? Bring up this one. It's this one right here. So here is 2.319.1 pre-release. And so places where we would see, let's make it big enough to read. Okay. So for example, when I look at the list of executors, you see this one right here. Right. That on an earlier version would have said, in fact, here, let's bring up the, the earlier version. Let's look at ci.jenkins.io. So on ci.jenkins.io, excuse me, I do not have fat fingers. <laughs> if we look at the agents, you see master here. Uh huh. And here it's called built-in built -in node. node. Okay. Okay, so that's, and then when I edit that thing, uh, I see, okay, here are the jobs tied to it. When I edit this thing, no jobs tied to it, that's healthy. Um, when, if I want to build something on this node, that's an anti-pattern, but let's say I have some very specific reason why I want to, like in my case here, there are some right. things that have to be executed on the controller. Uh -huh. and and in order to do that, I must use the label built dash in rather than the label master. Master, right, okay. That's what I wanna know in the upgrade guide. Right, and that's, and that's actually in the upgrade guide, telling them, and then there is this add the system property um, that that allows, yeah, in fact, here's another good example. Notice, do you see this URL? Sorry that uh -huh. the font is so signed. Notice it's got I built it. dash in. Uh -huh. Here, it's got master. All right. So, so there have been a number of changes like that, wherever it's referring to the node that is on the controller itself, it now says built in instead of calling a master. Right. Now, Back. is this PR, is that where it all, is that all the action? Is it on that note, manage nodes page? Are there other pages that are- No, then there is, fitting? then there is in addition, a, a setting which I don't know how to show it to you. What there is, is there's a setting that would, that allows you to migrate from master. So from master like this, to built-in node like this. Uh -huh. So there's a there's a migrate button. And that migrate button is described here as well. Add, basically it's add a, add a migration or what it really does is there's now a, a button or a, a link that will perform, that will migrate you from using master as your, the name of the node on your controller to using- Wouldn't that be good for me? That sounds like better phrasing to me. And yeah, like so let's- Tim let's, says, I don't care about the code. Right, right. And that's that's why I think, I think you're right. So, okay, replace the term master for the main Jenkins application with controller or built-in node in user interface and st strings and documentation. I'm gonna take okay. out the as appropriate. Yeah. Now, um, allow, how about the, let's try a new phrasing. Okay. Allow administrators to migrate 
from to no to how okay so no, notice here's the i'm going to break this line this part right here meg only after uh -huh. explicit migration but is the crucial thing okay administrate so it somehow i somehow what daniel's trying to communicate is is this change only happens if the user has performed this it has intentionally performed this migration okay so on an existing somewhere he says on a new system this is going to happen when you install but on Correct. the existing system, it's going to stay master unless you explicitly change it. Right, right. Maybe, maybe that's how we should. Existing installations will not automatically change the node name and label of the of the built-in node. Oops. Change the node name of the built-in of the the node name and label of the built-in node unless or until Till, yeah. an administrator, the administrator explicitly my performs the migration or or yeah. how do we say it clicks <laughs> Click select request check. the migration or yeah the problem is I don't remember what the UI action is because I I yeah perform well actually let's hey there is no excuse for this this is just code let's go get a computer and we're gonna watch it do you mind okay. if I take the time to do this not at all not at all um and another question is this only on the UI Did, would this affect my JCASC files um it that's as far as i know it does not affect jcask files good good question all right so we're going to so, do a or is it so i have to click on the ui or edit my jcask file to implement it right so i'm going to make this 2.303 okay. and now Just a minute and we'll get that file downloaded. So this explains what Daniel's been doing rather than look at my security documentation. Oh, Daniel's been, That's yeah. Good. Well, this is this was a while ago, but yeah, he's been absolutely wonderful with this. Daniel is wonderful with everything. We need to clone him though. Yes, that would be great. That really would be great. Although I don't know, maybe the world, there's people also that maybe the world can't tolerate. Could we have two <laughs> Einsteins, you know? That, that could like be as one well. One is enough for any world. Okay, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to run Jenkins 2.303. Okay. And Java minus jar Jenkins.war. Oh, no, wait a sec. <coughs> Equals. Oh, no. That'll do great. Okay. Okay, so we're going to run 2.303. And while that's running, I'm going to go, go grab the release can and be ready for it. Okay. okay, so now I've got to connect to that and we'll need this password. Okay, so here it is. Okay, a little slow. Come on. It's amazing how fast all this stuff is and it's always it's never fast enough for us. Yeah, well, and how spoiled I am. 
I remember we had a big release and one of the, the biggest feature was that you could rebuild it in 45 minutes. Exactly. See, and that's, that was a big deal. Talk, talk about the whiny complaining of why, why, why does my compile take five seconds? It should be done right. in three. Okay, so here we're going to install. Yeah, let's just install the suggested plugins and let it run. Yeah. 2.306, oh, that's a funny number. Well, we'll see. I thought I downloaded 2.303, but whatever. Uh -huh. Okay, so what this will do then is when this is finished, we will see uh, that we'll, we'll, I'll add an agent to it and then we'll see the agent is named master. And then we're going to do an in-place upgrade to, ah. to the new release candidate. And, right. and that will then give us this, please. Okay. All right, so busily installing. Okay, so Jenkins is ready. Okay. And when we look at build executor status, it shows master. Master, yep. Okay, and now in terms of the admin monitors, there's a new version of Jenkins available. And it warns me that there are secure, known security issues, but um, nothing- Do we have Jcast installed? We do not. Should we add that? And then we can look at those files too and see if- Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th this will this will actually cause no change to configuration as code. Okay. Whoops. But we can certainly do it. There's no reason. I just want to see if the string master shows in there so that we just say or edit your JCast file. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. And let's download now and install after restart. And it should be restarting. Here we go. So it's restarting. And the restart has, has begun. Still awakening. Okay. So we don't need, well, we might need that in the future. Can never have too many tabs open. <laughs> That's a great answer. So there was going out when we were having trouble with the networking stuff and Tom's looking at my computer and he's like, you've got a zillion tabs open. I'm like, yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. That's right. Oh, and Kristen has joined us. Kristen, I'm sorry. We're just continuing our discussion. No, it's all good. I've been, I've just listened. I was like, I don't, it's like I'm watching, learning. It's all good. Don't worry. Oh, cool. well, thank <laughs> I was spoken up so. if I had some good ideas, but I was like, nope, these suggestions all sound good. <laughs> so like, very good. Oh. It was also interesting to see this release stuff, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. well, and thanks very much for being here. Okay, so now what we see is, is this is still Jenkins 2.306, so an older version, using the word master to describe the executor on the controller. So here it is. You can see it. It says master, the master Jenkins node. Now we're going to stop this and upgrade by running a different war. So we're gonna upgrade by running the release candidate war. Why? What's wrong with me?
Oh, Java minus jar, not minus war. Would help if I use correct arguments. There we go. You note that I didn't know what the problem was, so. Yeah, well, how embarrassing. How many times have I told? Okay, so it's telling us it's upgraded Jenkins from 2.306 to this. So we, I got the correct version, big win. And it says Jenkins is fully up and running. So now we can visit this. Tick, 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 tick. Okay, here we go. So the usual view, and now this administrative monitor. Aha, look at this, who's this? Yeah, so now let's make it big enough to read. The word master is being retired as the term for the main Jenkins process and the built-in node. The main process is now control, called controller and the built-in node is called built-in node. The UI has been updated with these changes. The following features are also affected. La, la, la. <coughs> no, that's actually fairly, there's a couple of edits I'd make, but that's kind of good, right? Oh yeah, I love it. I think it's brilliant. Now, and then when you could I also click, explicitly add the master label to the building node. Yes, oh, that, okay. so that's an option, and that's part of I think that's part of this document. Ah, uh -huh. and this document describes all the places where where changes are. You know, it just lists plugins that have in, known incompatibilities. There's one more plugin that does that's been fixed, but it had had an incompatibility. What it doesn't tell you is how to change that. How to change what? The how to change master to built in. It oh, just you, tells you what to do before you do that. Are you you supposed click to know this that? button, apply migration. Where is that button? Top right. Oh, up there. Oh, there it is, right there. I see. Okay. So it's already document. I mean, that, I like short change logs that refer to the documentation always. Right, and that's what that's what this one is very much doing. Right, there's Daniel's done an excellent job of providing this documentation that describes impacts and risks and plugins that had known issues. Did he code that's, it in, in Markdown? Did he code what this? This file. Uh, it's actually an ASCII doc. Then why don't I have the subsections in the upper right corner? Oh, sorry. Let's see. Let me get back there. Why don't you have the subsections? Or is oh, it oh, because he didn't add it to the he didn't add it to the table of contents. Oh, okay. So, so I see. What you were looking for is where is the page that where's the thing that looks like this with the navigation or this or this. Oh, I want has, the upper right that would give subsections to that one. Yeah, file. the table of contents. There it is, thing, right, right there. Yes. Like um, this or this. Yeah. Because what I want to say then is just this will not happen until you explicitly do it following the instructions in and take them right to migration in that documentation. See that migration uh, right there? Well, and and certainly we can hyperlink to that migration if you think that will help. Oh, okay. Or, I mean, it's not that long, or you can just say in the migration section in this. Right. That, that's my tendency is just to say in the migration section, look at this. Yeah. Okay. So back to our editing the text. All right. So I, I guess other questions before we go back to the text is that, so we've seen that Oh, oh, and I should, okay, we, I haven't, haven't applied the migration yet. So first let's confirm this shows it's named built-in node, even now before I apply the migration. Mm -hmm. But if I look at built-in node, let's see, how do I see its labels? I don't, okay, I don't have a way to, just a minute, I'm, I want to see this because I need to be sure I understand it. So new node, uh, new, no, new agent by, let's, this is James Bond, that's what it is. Okay, good. All right. Uh, okay, and now, okay. 
Okay, let's use WebSocket because we're not actually going to connect anything. Now, when I click built in node, nope, I don't see. Go to manage Jenkins, manage nodes. Let's see if that's okay. There. Manage Jenkins, manage nodes. Okay, there's the documentation about that. And you say, I don't, is there a manage nodes anymore? Oh, I thought there was. Whoops. Up in no, that oh yeah, manage nodes Good. and clouds. Nodes Here we go. Clouds, okay. Yeah. But still, but this so I'm thing not is, seeing master anymore. Well, but let's let's see. Okay, we, so, but we haven't applied the right. So let me. I want to try something now. So I need to create a new item, and we're going to run on master. Okay, this is. We need to restrict where it will run. It's only going to run on an agent named Mas with the label master. And notice that label master does match one node. Okay. So now when I build it, it built and the right. console output tells us building on the built-in node. All right. But that means that the label master was there. Now, if I edit this job, configure it and say, instead of master, if I say built dash in, it will tell me nothing matches it. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to save it with that non matching. And now I'm going to perform the migration. All right. Okay, so I just performed the migration. And now when I configure it, it says label built in matches one node. Okay. If I were to change this back to master, it now says, nope, master is no longer recognized. Use built in. So nicely the, done. The UI here, as, as the text says, the UI is showing built in, even if the label is still master. Uh huh. But the migration changes the label to be master. Right. Okay, now uh, back to, ready to go back to text? Sorry yes. for this long and drawn out thing. No, but this that's is, good. Getting this thing right is, is vital for me at least. Yeah. Okay, so replace the term master for the main Jenkins application with controller or built-in node in user interface strings. And, and, and that, this is done with no escape, right? Right. This is done, you, you can't revert it, you can't avoid it, it's just done. Right. However, you no, know, yeah, user interface strings and documentation. So that part is done irreversibly. There's no uh -huh. way to change that. However, the next piece is the node name and the label will not change until an administrator explicitly performs the migration. Right. And is perform okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think so. Um, I would say do not change and rather than will not change. Uh, do not. Uh, very good. Yes. Right. Do. Yeah. Present tense. Okay. Yeah. And instead of, since I'm negating, I have to use an or, right? So existing right. installation do not change the node name or label of the built in node until an administrator explicitly performs the migration. Yeah. Okay new installations and should i put this before existing yeah yeah good idea okay all right if a job definition pipeline definition or tool installer must be tied to the built-in node it should use the label built-in good yeah okay so now the next piece, this piece here was a piece that Tim suggested this really belongs in the upgrade guide, not in the change log, because this is talking about the escape hatch. It's uh -huh. saying, if you simply cannot accept that, and you have to say, I want to override 
a different node name and label for the built-in node. Maybe you want to call it master. Right. Then, then you use this double secret escape hatch. Okay. And this does not rather than will not. Uh, uh, whoops, what did you say? Next sentence. Oh, this does not, right, present tense. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, okay. Yes, that's good. All right. And there, okay, we're, so, and somewhere else we've got the link to the Jenkins IO doc about all this. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the Jenkins IO link is up here. Okay. The, the trick for me is I wanna get that text, the system property text into the upgrade guide. Mm -hmm. So help me with this for just a minute. 2 30319. Okay, so here is the upgrade guide. I copied it almost verbatim from, from the, the article that Daniel had created, the page Daniel had created. I, I, he's done a great job of it. Right. Now I need to add the system property thing. So let's look at this page at the high level first to see if you can give guidance on, okay, where should we insert this kind of stuff? So here is how the page, the upgrade guide looks. It says upgrading to, and now here's the first, oops. <laughs> Built-in node name and label migration. So as part of this, there's a, a heading for affected features. There's a heading for migration there's a heading for plugin compatibility, and then that ends. Should I put something here for, and I don't know how we call escape hatches, should I put a new, a new heading at the same level as plugin compatibility, which says um, just in case or override or that, system properties? Could that be a, an information or note or something under Ooh. the migration section? Oh, very good. Very, very good. That's that's excellent idea. And then and then you could per, include a little bit of Jewish mother stuff that like <laughs> this is, you know, this is if you really know what you're doing and you're a little bit brave, you know, this is let's not make this as something that, you know, anybody should be doing. Right, exactly. Okay, just like just like Daniel did the info block uh -huh. here. We do right. something like that down here at the end of migration saying, if you've really got your body armor on and you've thought very carefully about what you're going to, yeah, good. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so I think what we wanna do then is take, take this information and put it into an info and that's here, he did that with a note. Okay, so we, we would put something like this. And now I have to find the correct formatting for the note. Because I want a multi-line note. So I think it is. Good. There's two syntaxes for notes. Yeah, I think that's well, and, and let's okay. Let's now I really am going to look up this the ASCII doc syntax for notes because I should just get it right first try. Such a perfectionist. Well, shame on me for not remembering it. Okay. I have Text. to look it up all the time because there are two of them. So that's I get them. Okay, note, an admonition, here we go, may contain, okay, it's four double equals, back to that. Okay. And did I get that right? Note. And they put it in square brackets, so maybe I. Uh, the, or you're the actually, but do you need multiple paragraphs in this note? No, I just need multiple sentences, and I like sentence per line. Okay, well, that I think is a. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like this. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so add the system <laughs> property. All right, now we need the Jewish Jewish mother. And I'm glad you said that, not me, Meg. <laughs> At Mormon <laughs> mothers might have, actually be the same thing, but. <laughs> okay, the now Jews I could have said that. The entertainment industry, so that's where we hear it, you know? Exactly, I could have said that. Very good, yes. all right. So add the system property. Okay, so now what do we do in terms of the, the, the alert it's, or the warning? It's something like, in those in rare cases administrators may need to may need to force the force a different node name and label for the built-in node yeah all right and then do we say in that case, if that is needed, yeah. required, add the system property yada yada to define us to specify a different node and label for the. Comments, does that work yeah. okay? Um, should we also at the bottom of it add a note that I think well there's one that says this is for you know sophisticated admin should we add a note that it is not guaranteed that this workaround will work in all future reference future releases or something mm. or is that actually not an issue no no it's a valid it's a valid point but I don't, I, I don't think, I think if, if Daniel had been willing to allow that level of escape hatch, he'd have said it. Okay. So my suspicion is he thinks this will probably be more of a permanent override okay. or permanent system property than a temporary one. Okay. What's under that pink block? Does it actually say no? no oh, sorry that. Yeah. It's, it's just my Emacs okay. doing highlighting. Yeah. Okay. Good. I just wanted to make sure. Yep. Okay. Um, So we've said rare cases. We haven't actually said this is the gun with ammunition pointed at your foot. Right. Do we so need how do, to? We, and maybe do, well, do we need to? I don't know. I and on my sense is I don't think we need to because the 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 harm from this is relatively minor. If you if you choose to apply this override, you're stuck with the old the old. Right. You're using a different node name and label. And if you're really, really, really unsophisticated, you don't know how to change a system property. Exactly. Ch system changing a system property is is actually quite complicated. So that's a level right there is the level of sophistication. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, then I think that's good. All right. So then I'm How's gonna this take... on you, Kristen. I think it sounds good. I'm yeah. I'm just like listening a lot too because I wasn't really involved with a lot of this, so it, it seems like it makes sense. And I, I know that yeah. In, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's like, no, like hide hide everything, but you, there's always going to be. It, it's better to you know. There's always going to be someone who's going to ask the question like, I have code that depends on this. So <laughs> I know. I <laughs> I mean yeah. Um, so, so it's good to have yeah. that is, to document the escape hatch. That's like look instead of having to answer a bunch of questions, it's like right here. Right. Yeah, well, because the other thing, the, the other thing that could happen, the whole industry is making this change, mm -hmm. and you could end up with some other software that requires it be called something else. I mean, mm. it's it might not be master; it might be main or right. You right. know, whatever. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Now there was one more, which was this additional pull request. Now warns about the use of master in a label expression. So let's let's show what that ah. means. I think we can. I think we I can saw, show. Well, when you change that, we saw that little warning that. Yeah, this is this is a in. different caliber of okay. warning. Okay. So okay. I think no. So let's see if we can find it. So this thing configure. So I'm going to say master. Okay. Ah, yes, it does. You're right. This was it. Okay. So this is the warning that says you're using the wrong thing. Use built-in instead. Right. 
Um, so just, that is yeah, try to making try making it main. Okay, sure. And that's okay, good. So anything you suggest, it's going to suggest that maybe you meant built built in. Right. Call, try right. Elmer. It doesn't have to be spelled properly. <laughs> yeah. So Elmer. Yeah, so if I do it this way. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it allows expressions, right? It right, right. Oh, wow. Okay. And and that that is a legitimate expression. Now, if I said, yeah. I think though, if I say master or master, it correctly says, sorry, that that cannot be satisfied. Nice. Right, and that is no longer used for the built-in node. Boy, he did a nice job of this. He he really did. Daniel did an excellent job. So yeah. so for me, I think back to the back to the phrasing. It's I I if if we want to retain this, I think it's brilliant that we do. That I, what he did is absolutely wonderful. If we want to retain it, I think I should just put it right inside this text. Otherwise, yeah, right, it's just right nice... after where the administrator. Um, okay, so here, let's try to find that. Okay. Where, where did it say this to, instead allows them to apply it? Ah. Um, Okay, so after existing installations do not change the node name, et cetera, until explicitly performs the migration. Um, could that, and then could we have a sentence after that that says, administrators are warned if the node, if they change a node name to the uh, Maybe one. this, once the migration is complete, um, job definitions, will warn about use of master in a label expression. Is that? Get rid of the will. Oh, yeah, right. Present tense. I, everybody Thank writes you. that way and they it's an editing job. Um, but wait a minute, but it, you got warnings in both directions, right? How's that? If you put, Built in before the migration, you get a warning if you put it. Yeah, in but after, then after. then the warning before the migration is the warning they've always received, which is you don't match any any agent, right. any node. This one is very explicitly phrased. Hey, it the thing you've used is used to be understood and is no longer yes. used that way. Right. Um, go back to the text. I'm almost wondering, but. God, do we even need to just put the ones, do we, or just say that administrators are warned if they use a label that's wrong? <laughs> yes, yeah, and, and that for me, I'm almost prone to just take this, take this text out. Yeah. And just put a, a reference, uh, actually just take it out and admit it's just a, a very nice UI feature that we don't need to put into the LTS change log. You might be right there too, yeah. Because for me, it's it is it's a very nice UI feature, but it it doesn't need to be in the LTS change log. They'll encounter it and be and be very right. pleased with it. I hope. Right, and if if they care about this stuff, they should read the doc. Right, that's that's the idea. So what what we just completed? Thank you for your patience with this. Was we have successfully compressed four things into one, the way Tim had asked. So that's great. Uh huh. Okay, so I've got to do I've got to do some more rework of this before submitting it. Sorry that I've burned all of our time on this one topic. We've got other topics on our list. Do we want to? What were those ones it? that I was supposed to warn you? The triage and what was the other one at the end? Okay, triage. Okay. Oh yeah, triage team. This one will wait. No problem. And this one will also wait. So okay. those are no issue. And mine will wait. Okay, if yours will wait, then I think we're we're set. Kristen, thanks for joining. And sure, yeah. any topics you wanted to bring, Kristen?
No, but I'm interested in that plug installation manager documentation. So. Oh, okay. Well, so maybe we just do this one minute. So I, oh, had a I was conversation. like, I can always read it as long as like uh, this just interests me. We, we have no well, over. but but the the crucial thing here was a structural question. Okay. I happen to have Tim Jacome, one of the maintainers of the plugin installation manager, yeah, on on the platform SIG meeting last week and asked him, "Hey, here's this large PR. How would you like it?" And Tim's guidance was hey, concepts and maybe a few simple use cases should be on www.jenkins.io, but the bulk mm -hmm. should go on to the, into the, the actual readme of the, of the repository because it's, it needs to travel with the code. Okay. And, and that pull request, I think you remember it, that we had looked at, it's, it's got lots of deep information, but the yes. danger is if it's on jenkins.io, on www, it will get out of date as the plugin is updated. So if we put it into the readme, it's closer to our plugin as the tool is updated. So, so I think he's right. And I, yeah. I intend to rework it to, to eventually close that PR and submit it as a PR to the, to the, uh, to the plugin or to the tool repository. Right. Yeah. Any, any objections? No, that makes sense. It just, I can yeah, understand having a very basic what is this? And then a pointing to something else, like something, hopefully a use case that will probably never change. Like, you know, the very basic hello world use case. Right. Um, but it does bring up a really interesting point about, um, and, and I do agree that we should keep our documentation like cl living close to the plugins and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if we need to have some of the stuff with the tools. Like, I, I don't know if there's very many that we care about that would have to be something like the plugin site where like it lives with the code, but it was like it's pulled into the main source I, I don't know if the right well and yeah. and maybe maybe what we do is something like ask okay this is this is sort of a one of a kind right now mm -hmm. there aren't many other things like this which are command right. line tools but we could always ask gavin mogan hey could we find a way to act as though plugin installation manager was a plugin even though it's not but I guess I guess the answer is no, we can't because right. the way he gets the list of plugins is from Update Center, and we right. certainly no, just, don't want this appearing in Update right. Center. Exactly. No, no. I'm just trying to think if there if there's like a an easy way for us to be able to kind of I guess the easiest way for us to do it now is to just have a this is a very basic something that will probably never change like how to use the tool, and then for more right. details, please see. Think exactly. Story. Well, it's like it'd be interesting to if there was an easier way to also slurp like essentially slurp that and put it on the site, but I don't, that's, and, that's difficult. And, and so. certainly we, we have that potential. If we were to, if we wrote the plugin installation manager docs in ASCII doc, mm -hmm. we could pretty trivially, trivially slurp it. But right. the other is, I think we may want to put basic use cases scattered in multiple locations because we need this same thing for Docker. We need it for Kubernetes. Okay. We, we have multiple locations where we need this Here's the trivial way to update your, your plugins. Okay. Right. This might explain to um, configuration as code. I was thinking I was just going to take the README file and convert it into ASCII doc and make it a file and, and under managing Jenkins. Now, it, first mm -hmm. of all, it doesn't actually tell you how to get started with this. Right. And it's got all these sample file snippets. And then it, there is a whole demo or something. There is a whole directory or on the plugin site or the, on the GitHub site for stuff, but it's, but I'm looking the snippets that are on the file, I'm pretty sure like slave shows up a couple of times. So those are probably out of date. Mm -hmm. Right. It makes it very explicit that they wrote this in 2018. They tell you that. Yep. And it's like, so it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, I'm the writer. It's all about the documentation I can put all over there, but some of this needs to stay close to the code. Right. Good. But somewhere, I'm I'm hoping there is there is the other file I've got to look at. I hope that somewhere there's instructions because I played with the CloudBees cask, but I don't know you know, but how you actually set this thing up initially and stuff. Right. So, okay, that's I'm glad we talked about that. I'll have to think some more. Excellent. Okay, good. Any other topics we need to go over before we call today done? I'm good. Me too. Okay. All Go Americans, ahead, so have a happy oh, no, I'm Thanksgiving. Good. <laughs> All right, I'll Thanks stop the too. recording. Okay.